Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and so if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Don Chorus, Jorgen's Path. So, the last place we left off for Jorgen, we had uh, just talked to him and Travis on the terrace. We uh, talked a little bit about uh, what kind of book he was reading. I believe it was Norwegian, I think it was like Norwegian Existentialism, I think that's what it was called. Um, I know very, very, oh look, there's there, there's Bjorn. No, it's not your time, Bjorn. It's, it's, a, it's the Bat Boy's time to shine. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Don't forget to, uh, well, I'm going to say that for the end of the video. I'm jumping ahead of myself here. Just sit back and enjoy for the next 20 minutes and let me entertain you. And Alarm Chain, you're up, and let's jump right into it. All right. <clears throat> I remember Miko always liked the idea of documenting everything around him, although usually in unusual ways. He suddenly looks away from me, focusing his gaze somewhere outside the window. You know, about your room... If you need a place to stay, then you could always stay here. His voice trails off, as if he changed his mind in the middle of the sentence, and the words come out really quiet. Um, sorry, I didn't hear you well. He gulps and looks back at me with determination. If you need a place, you're always welcome here. I've decided to wait with any decisions until the evening, so I'm not going to make any declarations now. But it's nice knowing that I have a place to where I can stay. That's much appreciated, Miko. It's great to have you as a friend. I mean it. He still looks at me, waiting for a response. It's an option, but I don't want to make any declaration now, because maybe someone will find the key or something else unexpected will happen. Miko nods. He doesn't really seem to be happy with the response, though. Sure. Miko looks down on his gear and starts to fidget with the knob, even though no music is playing anyway. He quickly notices the pointlessness of that and stops. I think I'll go for now. I can visit you again later. How about that? Oh! Sure. Maybe you'd like to go for a walk? I haven't been in a forest in quite a long while. Yeah. After dinner, maybe? Sounds good to me. See you later. I wave to him and leave the room. Why did I wave to him? Well, that was awkward as hell. But when he asked me if I want to stay with him, I didn't want to decline him. But in his eyes, I could see that he was really happy for that idea. I hope I didn't make him sad. I still have the time to make the decision, though, and I can spend time with him regardless. Still, it was nice, even if brief, visit. It was a nice, even if brief, visit. I haven't heard his music in a long time. Let me get more I just noticed those lamps up. Those, uh, those lamps up in the hallway, kind of like mushrooms. Let's go to the sauna. Let's go to that sauna. That's, that's quite time. That's quite time for Devon and Rune yet. Carvin! Before I even finish knocking, the door snaps open, taking me by surprise. On the other side of the door is my lion friend who grabs me by the sleeve and pulls me into his room. Ah! The painting that can sometimes get me demonetized. Come on in, and sorry for the mess. I just came back here myself a moment ago, so I had no time to tidy up. I have no choice but to enter the room, pulled in by Lake. Suddenly, he realizes what he's doing and lets go of my cuff, blushing. Oh, I think I got a little carried away, sorry. I pat his head twice, shaking my head. It would take much more to anger me, Lake. He says nothing, apparently still embarrassed. Somehow, he's even cuter when he's flustered like this. I look around the room, expecting to see clothes and trash on the beds and floor of after Lake's words, but there's not even a single t-shirt laying around. There are a few books laying on the desk, a suitcase on the floor, and a pack of nuts on one of the beds. If he calls this a mess, then I wonder what he thought of my room back in the dorms. The room itself is bigger than mine. There are two beds, both smaller than the one in my room, and a bigger window. And where's Jorgen? You're all alone here? He went outside with a book. He said that it's nicer there than the inside, and he's not going to spend the whole day indoors. I agree with him, but I've just been on a walk. Now all I want to do is warm myself up. Oh, Carvin, how about we go to the sauna now? What do you say? How could I say no to those puppy eyes? Or in this case, lion eyes. Not like I was planning on declining, anyway. I'm looking forward to it, to it just as much as he is. I say, that's, I say that it's just what I wanted to hear. Let's go! And here we are. <laughs> Entering the locker room, we're greeted by the distinctive smell of chlorine. There's only one joint locker room for the sauna and the pool, so it's not a surprise. As I take a full lungful of it, I'm instantly flooded by a wave of memories from various locker rooms I've been in throughout my life. This one is fairly small, which is to be expected from a moderately sized guest house, with just around 15 lockers and two rows and two benches between them. We're the only ones here at the moment, but the two lockers are already taken. I hope those two are at the pool. I 
I suppose that the sauna here would be big enough for the four of us, but I hoped I would be there alone with Lake. It's easier to walk. It's easier to talk when it's just the two of us. I took my socks and shoes back off back off back at the door, so now I only have to stash them into a locker. Lake chooses a locker on the opposite wall, stashing his flannel shirt into it. I should hurry up and I should hurry up. The tiled floor feels so cold in my bare paws. Taking off my shirt, I shiver in the cold, humid air. Locker rooms always make me feel a bit giddy. I guess it's probably the ca the case for most gay and bi guys. It's no coincidence that so many gay fantasies involve locker rooms. It's the first place where we can explore our sexuality, even if we have to do it sneakily. Taking curious glances in locker rooms is probably how most of us started. While I got lost in my thoughts, Lake already stripped to his underwear and put all his clothes into a locker. In Finland, nudity is nothing out of the ordinary, so there are plenty of times to see each other naked, and we feel completely comfortable like that. Nobody rushes to cover, uh, to cover themselves when changing into a swimsuit, and of course, we always get into the sauna nude. Still, I still shouldn't stare, but it wouldn't hurt to take a peek or two, right? Just out of curiosity. No. No, no, no. It's not your time. <laughs> While the thought is tempting, it would feel weird trying to sneak a peek at my friend. Okay, I should probably just finish undressing, too. I can look at him all I want in the sauna, anyway. I take off the rest of my clothes, folding them neatly and stacking them inside the locker. Okay, ready? I nod in response, closing my locker and turning the key. Remembering what happened to the previous key I held in my paw, I decide not to take it with me, but keep it in the lock. Somehow, I can't imagine another student wanting to steal my underwear. Eh, I'm gonna have to block that. <laughs> I join Lake in the showers. There's no separate stalls, just one row of shower heads extending from the wall, and I take the spot next to him. Ah! Cold! I chuckle quietly. Looks like Lake is even less cold resistant than I am. I press the button and water starts pouring onto me. Ah! It really is cold! I wash myself quickly, rubbing liquid soap into my fur, paying special attention to my armpits and groin. It's important to be squeaky clean before the sauna. The porous wood of the sauna benches soak up sweat easily. It's better not to carry any bacteria into the sauna on our bodies. Okay, see you there! Zoop! Lake finishes his shower in under a minute, springing out of the cold water and hopping through the cold tiled floor, grabbing a towel on his way and reaching the men's sauna door. Yeah, I'll join you in a minute. Lake disappears inside the sauna, closing the glass door behind him. I finish the shower quickly, not really keen on staying in the cold water any longer. We came here to warm ourselves up, after all. I walk away from the shower completely soaked, my wet fur clinging to my body. There's a stack of fresh towels at the entrance to the sauna. Only now I remember that I didn't bring one with me. Plus this guest house. I take one and start rubbing my fur vigorously to get rid of as much moisture as I can before entering. No point in drying myself completely. I'm going to, I'm going to be soaking wet in no time anyway. I open the sauna door and enter, immediately feeling the intense heat of the burning coals on my fur. Oh, whew, hmm, this is just what I needed. Huh, this place is really neat. This actually looks very similar to Colorado. I went to Colorado a couple uh, a couple months ago, and this looks so much like it. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning, and jaw dropping. I was just glued to the car window the entire drive to my friend's place, <laughs> just gawking at the scenery because, well, I'm from the American South, and there's really not a whole lot to see down here. The closer you are to Florida. I'm probably going to piss off some people from Florida, but I, I have been to Florida. It's got some nice areas, but guys, it, okay, so the ocean is awesome. The ocean is cool, but me being a sea dragon, I love the ocean. Um, okay, so I love the ocean, and the mountains are fucking cool. How about that? And I don't give a shit about Disneyland, so. <laughs> huh. This place is really neat. Not only is it surprisingly big, but it has a glazed wall, too. This is one of the fanciest saunas I've ever been in. The ones back home are usually a bit less fancy. Lake is sitting on a middle bench with his eyes closed, relaxing. I decide to take the opposite bench. The whole sauna is ours for now anyway, and it'll be easier to talk if we are facing each other. The heated wooden floor burns my paws, so I quickly spread the towel on the lowest bench to sit down on it. I prefer to work my way up to go for the hottest spot first. Hmm. Phew! I really missed this. I lean back on the wooden bench, feeling the tension slowly escaping my body. There's no new age music in the sauna. No bird chirping played from the speakers, which is just how it should be. <laughs> Lake is still sitting with his eyes closed, but I can hear a quiet content rumbling emanating from his chest. His chest rises and falls steadily with his deep breaths. It's so quiet here that I can actually hear him breathing. Lake? <laughs> he opens his eyes finally and looks at me, 
corners of his snout curving upwards into a slight smile. Carvin? This is a really cool sauna. I know! I was happy that there's a sauna here at all, but this? A glazed wall? Now that's cool! And what a view it has! Yeah, views are certainly magnificent. The first drops of sweat start to dribble down the light-colored fur on Lake's torso. It's really hot and humid here. You must have poured like half a bucket of water onto the rocks before I came here. It's a, sh it's a shame there's no lake outside the guest house, though. Well, there's one inside. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, it's not your real name, is it? Lake, I mean. What made you think so? Lake chuckles quietly and looks outside the window. I was wondering why you didn't ask me about that earlier, actually. I had the rare chance to choose a name for myself, so I decided to go with an English one. I wanted something easy to pronounce, too. I knew I would move out of the country, so I wanted to have a name that would remind me of Finland. And what is more Finnish than lakes? Apart from saunas, of course, but sauna does not really make a good name. I can relate to that. How did it work in your case? Lake's expression doesn't change, but I can see a reluctance in his eyes. That's a story for another time. I like your name. It's pretty unusual. He looks at me with his lively crimson eyes again. He looks really handsome in the warm light of the evening sun. Carbon? There's a certain softness in his voice that I haven't noticed before. My heart is hammering in my chest. I shouldn't stay in the sauna much longer. You and... Torolf. How did you two get to know each other? Torolf. The slight smile he had on his face all the time stays there, but now it looks more apologetic than happy, and I can tell that he is a bit flustered. He's an interesting guy, but I'm sure you've noticed that much yourself already. We've met at a cocktail place not far from the university, soon after I moved here. I was sitting alone there. He sat down next to me at the bar and started a conversation. Since then, we meet from time to time. I don't know many other students here, and it's nice to have someone you can visit sometimes. Since we meet from time to time, I'm betting you're doing a lot more than talking. <laughs> thud, thud, thud. I can hear my heartbeat. This isn't good. We weren't here for very long, but I think that it's time to leave. I better go now. You want to you want to stay some more? Nah, I'm going to. I've had enough heat for a while now. We both stand up and grab our towels, leaving the sauna. We step into the showers, both panting heavily, completely drenched with sweat dripping from our fur. How come they have such a fancy sauna here, but only those lame cold showers? What I would give for a real lake to hop into right now. I can think of a lake I can hop into. You guys, you make it too easy. You may just make it too easy. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be nice. Cooling down is no less important to the sauna experience than sitting in the sauna itself. Yeah, I'd hop into a lake in a heartbeat. <laughs> Wait. Wasn't there a door outside, outside back in the corridor? Lake looks at me with a mischievous smile. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so. What if someone sees us, though? Come on, who could see us here? And even if they did, what would they do? Throw us out into the snow? It was your idea anyway. Don't back out of it now. I throw the towel onto a nearby bench. Oh, what the hell. It's good to do something crazy once in a while. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> I love it. Opening the door, we step out into the cold Arctic air. A gust of wind ruffles our bare fur, making us both shiver. Okay, on three. One, two, three! We both jump into the fresh snow that's covering the ground with a thick layer. A jolt of adrenaline hits me immediately. Forcing my body to cooperate with me, I start rolling around, rubbing the snow into my fur. So cold! I gasp wildly, feeling a burning sensation on my skin. Next to me, Lake emits a high-pitched squeal, comically springing up from the snow all shivering. I stand up too, feeling a bit lightheaded and absolutely freezing. The snow melts down in my fur, and the steam billows off our silhouettes into the evening air. Lake comes close to me, panting, his breath turning into white clouds. He locks his eyes with mine, and we both laugh with pure joy. <laughs> enough? Yeah, definitely enough. Together we return to the warm inside, invigorated by the experience. <laughs> Lake is a silly billy. He's a silly lion. Phew! Once again, I'm almost late for meal. I need to pay attention to the time more. I got sidetracked on my way here, browsing through new albums on, ra on, rate the on ratethemusic.com and lost track of the time. Afternoon light fills the room with a golden glow, giving it a more relaxed atmosphere, much different than the energetic mood that seemed to permeate the room during lunch. The voices in the cafeteria seem to be quieter, too. 
Maybe it's the peacefulness of this place slowly influencing everyone here. Rune and Coach Devon are already sitting at our table. Oh, and Jorgen is here too. We sit down at the table, and the sounds of chairs scratching against the wooden floor reverberating through the room. I look in the direction of the table besides ours, where Amiko sat during lunch. He's sitting there again, leaning on his paw and looking somewhere outside the window with a wistful look on his snout. And there's Travis sitting there too, talking with Bjorn. I had no idea these two knew each other. I thought that Travis would want to sit next to Jorgen. I wonder what they're going to serve for dinner. That lunch was so good. I expect something like that in some trendy lunch bar downtown, not here. Their table is just their table is just next to ours, and we're at the very end of the room, so it shouldn't bother anyone. Yes, even though the dishes were simple, the quality of everything was surprisingly high. The variety was also nice. I expected just one dish or even simple sandwiches. Most of the staff left already, so this time we're likely to get reheated food. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Would you mind if we joined our table with that one? My friends are sitting there too. We're at the end of the cafeteria, so that shouldn't make a difference to anyone. I point in the direction of the other table, looking around at everyone looking looking around at everyone at ours. <laughs> hmm. I see no problem with that. However, you should go and ask the other table if they don't mind it either. Sure thing. Uh, so nobody hears anything against it? No worry. Go ahead and ask them. Okay, that's great. I was sure there would be more persuading involved. I stand up from the table and walk to the other one, where Miko was sitting, and tap him gently on the shoulder. He turns around, clearly surprised to see me. His ears perk up and a cheerful smile appears on his snout. Carvin! What are you doing here? Would you mind if we joined the tables? This way we could all sit together. No, I wouldn't mind at all. Is that okay, Bjorn? I don't want to speak for everyone here. Oh, why would I? That would be cool, actually. I nod. Wow. This was really very easy. I return to my table and wave at Coach, trying to get his attention. They see no problem with it either. We can go ahead. Coach simply nods in response and stands up. Okay, everyone, help me move the table. We all stand up, lift the table, and join it with the other one. Hello there. Hope you don't mind us joining. Of course not. We were just talking about the facilities here. Were any of you in the swimming pool or sauna here yet? Oh, I was in the sauna with Carvin. It's really neat. If you weren't there yet, you definitely should go. I visited the pool with Devon. It's fine, not very big, but enough to get some speed. Oh, and there's quite a few from there. By the way, I don't think I've introduced myself yet. I'm Bjorn, and I study neurology, currently at the second year. Second year? I'm sure he was much older than me. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Oh, good idea. How about we all introduce ourselves? I don't know most of you yet. I'm Rune, currently in the fourth year of my studies, neuroscience. Apart from that, I also play basketball, and have a few other hobbies I try to cultivate whenever I have the time. I'm Travis, studying neuroscience too, but I'm in my first year. I moved to Norway from the US, but I'm half American, half Japanese. I like anime and JRPG games, Japanese and Korean cuisine, and Vikings. Oh, and some good tea from time to time. Green tea is, green tea is so nice. True, Japanese sencha is my reason to live. I'm more of a fan of matcha, but I always start my day with one, but I wouldn't say no to a cup of sencha. Um, I'm Miko, and I study marine biology, with a specialization in cetaceans. I'm a freshman and I moved here from Finland, just like Carvin here. I make music in my free time. I'm Carvin, and as Miko just said, I moved here from Finland. I study cognitive science, and in my free time I dabble in photography, both digital and analog. Oh, yeah, you were supposed to show me some of your photos. The one you had with the one you had with you during lunch was nice. I will, but I have them all in my room right now. So, I'm Lake, and like Miko and Carvin, I moved here from Finland. I'm a freshman too. Only I study astrophysics. I'm happy to meet you all. I'm Jorgen. In the second year of astrophysics studies, I like literature and I don't like noise. Everyone is looking at Coach expectantly. Only after a moment he understands that we're waiting for him to introduce himself too. That's what he gets for sitting with students, I guess. Um, so, I'm Devin. I believe you all know me. I'm a coach at our university, and I'm here to su supervise you. I moved here from the U.S. less than a year ago, so I'm still just slowly adapting to the U to the life here. He's suddenly interrupted by the lady from the reception who came with our dinner. She greets us and starts putting plates of food down on the table. First there's some soup, pea-colored and creamy, smelling of marjoram and thyme. Then, a few dishes filled with various stuff, like mashed potatoes, sprinkled with dill, whole-baked carrots and veggie balls, and a jug of sauce. 
And finally, she puts down two platters full of pancaker. Thin Norwegian pancakes topped with some dark blue jam and various fruits. Who are those blueberries? I love blueberries. Just don't eat all of them. There's eight of us here, Groon. Shush, you know I'm not like that. And then he proceeds to eat all of them. Oh, it's our Sapa, Swedish pea soup. And veggie balls. Looks like we're having a Swedish dinner today. Hmm, that's some strong Yukia restaurant vibes. I've never been to one. Are they good? The food here looks delicious for sure. Well, they're not as good as this place, but you get what you pay for. They're a bang for the buck. Oh, I used to go there a lot back when I was in high school. I'd grab my books and go there to study, taking advantage of the unlimited coffee refill that they have there. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. We're at the cafeteria scene again, so I'm... Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is just a filler episode, but, I know. Uh, you know, that's just how it is sometimes with VNs. I got a time limit. I gotta get more content out to you guys. I've got two more videos to do today. Yep. And I am also, uh, as you'll notice... As you'll notice, I will have uploaded uh, a non-VN game. Don't worry, guys, I'm still going to be covering VN games. I'm just also kind of want to diversify my channel portfolio. I also I want to, you know, because when I started this channel, I, I was mainly doing uh, retro first-person shooter and horror games. So, since my channel has some popularity and an audience, I would like to kind of get back into that. Kind of give um, you guys more variety. And if you don't like that, then, hey, I still play VN games, and you can still look forward to those. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!